Terrific defensive tackle. White with the boot, and Washington has it. Up over the 25, 35, and jostled up close to the 40, a 25-yard return for Damon Washington. Hinock Mwambo was huge on the goal line for four of five plays, but I want to show you the fifth. He was big on all four, and then this was the last one. There he is off the edge. Now watch, he's got the bad angle here. If he goes up the field this way, he cuts McPherson off. He gets caught in behind. McPherson can bounce it. That buys him that split second to get it down the field. Here's Buck Pierce rolling out, passing underneath, and Clarence Denmark has got it. He gets taken out by Chip Cox, who led the league after yeah. week one with 13 tackles. How about that? Uh, an Alouette record for tackles in a game. 13 tackles, the previous record held by Stephen Reed and Michael Botterill in 05 and 2000. 13 tackles for Chip Cox in a losing effort. Eight for Denmark, second down, pulled down by Pierce, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage and not much more. A little extra going on here. Did the ball come loose? It did. It did, and the Alouettes come up with it. Rod Davis with the fumble recovery. Well, we wondered if the Bombers would challenge the determination of a fumble, but the replays would indicate that Buck Pierce was not down when the ball came loose. Yeah, I think the, the ball is out. You can see his knees haven't touched, and the ball was out there. Ventrell Jenkins, the defensive tackle with the strip, and Rod Davis from Edmonton has the recovery. Knees haven't touched, and that's the football that is loose. Rod Davis has the fumble recovery, and the Owls have the ball. And the momentum breaks back to work. Galvillo has a completion. Brian Bratton, that's the fifth, sixth of the receiver, but he fumbles, and the Bombers get it back, and they needed that. Jonathan Hefty comes up with the ball as Brian Bratton coughs it up. Well, Brian Braddon had great speed when he turned the corner and he was right along the sidelines. He had picked up a first down and then some. And I'm not sure who gave him the hit, but there's the route coming from the backfield out into the flat and the accuracy on the throw bang on from Anthony Calvillo. Now watch him turn with speed. It's Javon Johnson chasing with the right arm punch. Out it comes. That is a fumble. Jonathan Hefney has it. Defensive player of the year. So the teams trade turnovers on consecutive plays. And the Bombers will start again from inside the 20. Dorsen, nothing there. As he gets steamrolled, Luke Mullender, the former Saskatchewan Rough Rider, has his first tackle of the night. It's a big turnover for, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers when you consider the way that Anthony Calvillo has started this game. He's been on the money. That throw was on the money again. They get this turnover and really dodge the bullet, maybe going down two scores, but they've got to get it out of this area of the field. Flop the field position. Loss of one, second and 11. Here comes Emory on the blitz. Pierce to Matthews, and he'll get a first down with a lot more. Chris Matthews tries to tightrope it, and he gets to the 40-yard line. It's a 22-yard gain. That's the longest pass play so far for the Bombers in 2012. Well, and it's picked up nicely by Blaudy Doors, and you mentioned Shea Emery on the blitz, Chris, and he is going on the blitz. A little bit of a delay right in the middle here, but watch Doors and step up, and this was an issue for him last week in his first game in the CFL. Had a little bit of trouble blocking and didn't run the ball real well, but he picks up the blitz there. Bombers go hurry up, and that pass is batted down. Off the edge, linebacker Kenny Ingram. So it'll be second and 10. And again, the Bombers will continue no huddle, which we saw mm -hmm. in week one. Justin Sorensen, the, the center. Shotgun snap. And there's a completion in the flat, and Gerald Brown won't let Terrence Edwards get to the first down step. Uh, one too many moves maybe for the veteran there. 
He, he had about three or four yards to go. I thought he might have been able to get it with that little shake and move inside. But when he get a, another fake to get back outside, that's when he kind of allowed the pursuit to get there. See that one right there. If he goes inside and really drives it, he might pick up the first there. Just had the six catches, but just 41 yards over six catches last week for Terrence Edwards. Bombers do get it out of a hole, and Mike Renault gets it to kick. Guy near the sidelines, and he feels that right on the line where Montreal will take over after a 44-yard punt. Warm night in Montreal, staying cool on the sidelines is John Lou. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we're here with Al uh, Alouette's halfback, Dwight Anderson. And Dwight, on Wednesday, you suffered a mishap in practice. Coach Tressman described it as a split finger. Can you just take us through that and the treatment that you received for it? Uh, well, basically what happened was I went up for the ball, and, like, the ball hit the tip of my finger, and it basically just exploded. <laughs> so what they had to do is I had to go in surgery right, right after practice. I went and we had surgery and stuff. They just put the finger back together and got a pin in there right now. So in 10 days, they pulled the pin out, and I should be good to go as far as rehabbing the fingers. So we're looking at about two weeks. The most, you know what I'm saying? So we're probably around the Hamilton game. I should be making a comeback. So, you know, it's kind of disappointing, you know, after what happened last year, you know, with the quad injury. But, you know, I'm just blessed, to you know, that I could come back and play again this year. So. You, know, you mentioned the quad injury from last year. You missed eight games. How do you fight the feeling that this is kind of like Groundhog Day starting this season? It is, man. You know, it's coming in this year, my goal is not to get hurt. You know, try to finish the whole year, you know, all the games. But now we got the bad luck on our side. But, you know, we just got to shake that and move on. You know, keep your head up. And that's what I'm doing, just keeping the positive, cheering the guys on out here. You know, we we'll go out here and get a win and make everything a lot better. And hoping that it's only two weeks. That's it. I'm going to make it, too. Thanks for this flight. All right. Great Brian Bratton with a catch and atoning for the fumble. He gives Montreal a first down, a 17-yard pickup. Nice coming back to the ball there. It's interesting you hear Dwight Anderson and football player's mentality. The ball hit the tip of my finger, and it, it kind of exploded. <laughs> and he's, and he's kind of laughing about it as it exploded. For any other human being, that's painful excruciating hustle to the probably tears it exploded he was laughing about it a couple weeks for Dwight Anderson one first down away from their total of all last week and an open receiver backfield that's Jay Green and Alex Super drags him down at the 20-yard line that's Jay Green had to wait on this a little bit or he scores Three receivers to the wide side of the field. Well, they're basically in the middle, the right side being the strong side. Look at that nice swim move. Little bounce on Alex Suber out and around the numbers. And then he has to put the brakes on, kind of come back a little bit for that ball or he goes and scores. 49 yards for Green, sixth in the league in receiving last year. And now Calvillo already more passing yards in this first quarter than all last week. Wow. A 183 yard first quarter and counting and the clock is draining here with maybe time for one or two more plays. Play action take to Whitaker. And Delvio at the line of scrimmage crossed it. So an illegal forward pass as he looked for Green in the end zone. Did not take off last week, and it looked like that was going to be his first run of 2012. Yeah, he didn't, didn't have one rush last week. Calgary Stampeders did a nice job defensively against him. Illegal forward pass. Montreal number 13. That penalty is declined. Second down. Tom Valesi in charge tonight. Take a look here. You're on the 21 yard line. So go ahead and roll it. Show AC on the roll. And then I will stop it when we get to about that step right there okay this was this was the wow. line of scrimmage back here yeah he was he's three he's yards three yards over so second and ten stepped off to Whitaker underneath and the Whitaker touchdown <laughs> 21 yards 
Calvillo to Whitaker. Capping an impressive opening quarter here for the Alouettes. Good balance in the offense. Anthony Calvillo is back on. They empty out the right side. Really no receivers over there so that Brandon Whitaker has lots of room to operate. In fact, he gets that football with the nose to the end zone so quickly, Jeff Parrott just goes along for the ride. Doesn't have to block anybody. 21-yard touchdown. Big play in the drive, a 49-yarder to S.J. Green. And the Alouette offense is in high gear after 15 minutes of their home opener. 14-0 Alouettes. So Anthony Calvillo's back. Yeah, that could be one of the best quarters he's had in a distinguished 19-year career. Uh, there were questions about whether or not the expiry date on the greatest CFL quarterback passing yardage-wise was approaching, but uh, looked pretty young in that opening quarter. Oh, he looked real good. Sharp. Back on his game. And Brandon Whitaker, a very important part and piece to the puzzle for him. Get this offense going. It starts with his backfield. Whitaker's been real important. Well, the focus was on the offenses coming into this game. The Alouettes have answered some questions. Now it's in the court to Buck Pierce of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers offense. Here's Washington. Another good return for Devon Washington, and he steps out just past the 40-yard line. They'll mark him out at the 43. Well, Buck Pierce has to try and get something going here. He said in the Winnipeg Free Press this week, this was his quote. If we play like that, like they did last week in Vancouver, we're not going to win another game all year. And he's right. He's got a, he's got some help up front, some veterans returning in Glenn January. They are trying Justin Sorensen at center. Try and get some help there. January should help out, but it's it's now. This is important quarter for the Bombers. One of the guys they really miss on offense is Montreal native Corey Watson. Still at least a week away. Take the doors in, and there's a completion for Matthews across midfield for Winnipeg, and then stacked up there. Five catches for Chris Matthews last week, 48 yards. He did have a touchdown late in the game. That from Alex Brink. When Brink was in at quarterback, got a couple drives going, two touchdown passes for him. So Matthews is working into the offense, and when asked about whether or not we may see Alex Brink here tonight, La Police was basically no. Our starting quarterback's Buck Pierce unless he's hurt. Three catches for Matthews, a first down just across midfield. For Kidder Edwards, double clutch that before pulling it in. It's another first down as the Bombers are on the attack here inside the Alouette 45. All about recognition here for Buck Pierce. He sees the middle open up. And when he sees that little inside run there, zone defense, so that's not a size size man going inside. Next closest guy was Chip Cox, but not until Edwards had the first. Of course, Where Terrence you Edwards here? started his career here in Montreal, a couple of games with his brother Robert, the running back. Dorson finds a hole and sneaks through. Lonnie Dorson straight ahead and down inside the 20, and that looked like the guy who was impressive in the preseason with runs of 25 and 38 yards, his best when it counts. You know, it's justified that last week he struggled, but Vladi Dorsen is trying to get his feet underneath him, and he's starting to. It showed you in the first quarter, he made a nice block on a blitz by Shea Emery. Now Dorsen finds a crease and shows his speed, breakaway speed up the middle. It's a nice run for the young player. 28 yards for Dorsen and a first down Winnipeg. Just inside the 15, they'll swing it up. Here's Denmark and Chip Cox. Snuffs that out. When you're a rookie and you may have had a good preseason, you may have had a good training camp, but you get in there in your first game and the lights come on and it's it's moving pretty fast. He was struggling, Vladi Dorsen, in BC. Had some problems running the football, had some problems with blocking in the passing scheme, and he has come out and he has improved his play tenfold. We've seen some big blocks in the passing game, and now a good run from Vladi Dorsen. They tell us Chad Simpson, who was impressive in training camp, could be available next week at running back. So Dorson 
maybe looking over his shoulder. A loss of...